Depending on what stage of the game you're at, you may have noticed that you have the ability to augment your gear. This is a way to further improve upon your gear and is designed as an endgame post-game system. From the perspective of Iceborne, this is only really going to be available once you've gone through the story, you've entered the Guiding Lands, and possibly only once you've reached MR100 and you've got good access to the Spirit Vein gems, etc. After Iceborne released, it's not really something that's worth considering for base game. As such, we're going to be looking at weapon augmentation for Master Rank, and specifically for Rarity 12 weapons, the absolute top tier ones. I'm Light It Up Dan, and on the channel we cover action RPGs, roguelikes, and MMOs, including a ton of Monster Hunter World. I like to produce content that aims to reduce the overwhelm and the unknown of the game. If you haven't caught any of the event roundup or weapon overview videos, there's something there for everyone, I highly recommend them. Just quickly want to say you folks have really turned up and got us to around 80% of unsubscribed viewers on the channel. As the majority of you are returning, if you enjoy the videos, do subscribe. And with that said, let's get to it. As we mentioned at the start, weapon augmentation is a way for you to get your fully upgraded weapon powered up even more with a little bit of extra oomph, a little bit of je ne sais quoi. Amongst these upgrades is one that really stands out from the group. We're of course talking about the health regen augmentation. The description reads, recovers a tiny bit of health in proportion to damage dealt to an enemy. Does that sound like something you've seen in other games before? It's only bloody lifesteal, isn't it? And it is so glorious, let me tell you. It adds a 7.5% lifesteal effect on your weapon across all the attacks you do with it. 7.5% lifesteal across all damage for your weapon. It's crazy. It's so, so good. The required materials are going to put you on a bit of a journey, and if you can't see them, I can show you what they are over here. These are unique to the Guiding Lands, so they all only apply to there. Seven Tempered Transhides from Tempered Namiel, five Charged Deathly Shockers from Zenoga, three Elder Spirit Vein Bones from Tempered Elders, and one Guiding Reef Dragon Bone from the Bone Gathering in the Coral Region. First up, you're going to need a regular non-Tempered Zenoga to show up. If your Forest Region or Coral Regions are lower level, this will prevent the Zenoga from being Tempered. As you're going to need the Coral Region to be level 7 for the Tempered Tempered Namiel, you may want to do this by having your forest region at a lower level. If you've encountered Zenoga before in the Guiding Lands, you're going to be able to meld yourself a lore. Using this consumable will force a Zenoga to spawn into either the forest region or the coral region. Again, you're going to want to use forest at a lower level. If your coral's at 7 and you summon it there, it's going to be tempered. Zenoga can be a cheeky monkey at the best of times. Focus out your damage on the head, its weak point, try to get part breaks as much as you can for additional flip inches, go for wall bangs whenever it's not enraged, and tenderize the parts to maximize your damage whenever you can. For whatever reason, whether it's intended or not, but they definitely know about it and haven't patched it out all this time. In the Guiding Lands, having one level of Geologist allows you to pick up the Shinies twice, which means double drops for all these monsters and less farming. Pretty good. Between the drops and the calves, you'll get plenty of charged Deathly Shockers. For Tempered Namiel, you're going to need to get the Coral Region to level 7 to the maximum level. The best ways to increase your region level quickly if you're unfamiliar is to gather as many tracks as possible from that region specific monster, such as Zitsiyaku for the coral region, hunt those monsters, break those monsters parts, and trap them repeatedly. Spam them with traps as much as you can whilst breaking as many parts as possible, while sniffing all of their footprints like a goddamn perv. After hitting level 7, eventually a tempered Namiel will show up. By this point you're probably a pretty experienced Hunter, but do not take her lightly. She's a tempered elder dragon and she will wreck you real fast. Keep your damage out on the head as best as you can. I know her water cannons kind of make that difficult. Tenderize whenever possible and go for wall bangs whenever she's not enraged. Watch out for the water blight that's going to make this fight very tricky if you get it. You can counter it with resuscitate or by having blight resistance or 20 water resist to give you innate water blight immunity. Once again, ensuring you've got geologist level 1 somewhere on your build to double up on the shinies, you will pick up loads of tempered trance hides, and you'll also get your elder spirit vein bones as well, all in one go. Once more, between the shinies and all the calves, you should have plenty to go around. Lastly, we need the guiding reef dragon bone, acquired by maxing out the bone gathering bar by gathering at the bone nodes in the coral region. If you haven't made yourself a gathering loadout, I highly recommend you do so. It'll make it loads easier, less stressful, and will speed up the whole process massively. For what we're after specifically, level 3 geology 
Psychologist and Level 3 Intimidator are going to be really useful for you. That way each node is worth more and you won't be pestered by all the small monsters. Make sure you bring out your Palico as they'll be gathering alongside you. And if you can get any other Palico teammates, those Tail Raiders you see knocking about the place, they will help as well. Whilst you're here for the Bone Gathering nodes, you might as well mine the ores as well. There's absolutely no reason not to. The more you gather these nodes, the more the bars fill up. Once the bars fill up fully, that's when the magic happens and a giant cluster appears for you. For the bone one, this is how you get the Guiding Reef Dragon Bone. There is also a very small chance that you'll get it at all the regular bone gathering nodes. And as you can see from the end of it, my Palico also got some and the Tail Raider got some too. I walked away with loads of these. Now you have everything you need to do your health regen augmentation on your Rarity 12 Master Rank weapon. As you've seen, there's quite a bit of setup involved, but once you've done it once, it's really easy to repeat the process. Your coral region can be fixed to level 7. When you craft laws for Namiel, she'll be tempered when she comes out. You can keep your forest region level low to make sure you can always get access to a non-tempered Zenoga. And you've likely picked up on where all the gathering nodes spawn inside the coral region. It's a very small little loop. So far, I've put the health regen, the lifesteal augment on two of my weapons, my two fully upgraded Fatalis weapons. I've got it on the Fatalis hammer of course, my love, my main weapon, and also the Fatalis Sword and Shield, which I've really been getting into and I'm starting to fall in love with it. I was using this in the fights against Zenoga and the Tempered Namiel, so you might have noticed the lifesteal proccing during it. That 7.5% on all of your weapon damage is absolutely crazy. Any big hitting attacks that crank out quite a lot of pain, like, oh, I don't know, every single bonk the hammer does, and a lot of the big hitting swings from the Sword and Shield or the Perfect Rush combo for example. God damn, it heals you up so good. This is going to massively help with your survivability for the harder end game content. And it doesn't have to be the Fatalis weapons like I've done here. It can be any of the Rarity 12 weapons. You can put it on your Raging Bracky weapons, for example. You can also augment the lower Rarity Master Rank weapons, the Rarity 11 and the Rarity 10 ones, provided that they are the most upgraded version of that weapon at the end of the tree. These will utilize different, easier to gather Guiding Lands materials, but utilize the exact same premise. One use case I can see this being very applicable to is the Rarity 11 Frostfang Barrieth weapons, which are very likely to be your best choice up against Alatreon. Having lifesteal for that fight is going to be an absolute game changer. Have you already or been interested in augmenting your weapons? Have you grabbed yourself the health regen yet or are you going to? Let me know in the comments, I would love to hear from you. As we mentioned at the start, you folks have really shown up and got us to around 80% of unsubscribed viewers on the channel. As the majority of you are returning, if you enjoy the videos, do subscribe. I've opened up the Discord to all of you so we can group together, get some hunts in and have a good time. We do lots of multiplayer sessions on Discord and in the live streams over on Twitch as well. All those links are in the description. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, I'll see you in the new world.